What's going on guys, this is Andrew Chicken and welcome back to another video. In this one I'll be counting down my picks for the top 5 most powerful tanks in Paladins. These tanks are incredibly efficient at their job of capturing and holding the objective and can be absolute beasts on the battlefield. The tanks on this list are decided by 5 different factors. Their win rate compared to other tanks, how much health they have, how powerful their shield is, how many crowd control abilities they have and how powerful those abilities are, and how much self-sustain they can have through healing and damage reduction in their loadout, as these are the most important factors for a frontline to have to effectively tank on the objective. So without further ado, let's get into the fifth most powerful tank in the realm. Number 5, Khan. Khan is the newest champion of Paladins and a lot of people don't consider him to be very effective compared to other tanks in the realm. However, if you can play him correctly, he can be an absolute menace on the battlefield, especially with a slew of buffs that he's received in the past few patches. Khan has a very average health pool of 4,000 health, but it can be boosted up to an impressive 4,750 health with the plate mail card. He also has two abilities that make him a huge pain to take down on the objective, his bulwark shield and his battle shaft. His 6,000 health bulwark has an infinite cooldown as long as it's not destroyed, and it can be toggled on and off at any moment so Khan can use it to block some heavy incoming damage and then put it down to continue fighting while all its health recharges. While it isn't very big, it is an excellent shield that is great at keeping Khan alive. On top of that, he has the most powerful self-sustain ability in the entire game. Khan's battle shot crams so many good things into one ability with the firing line talent that it could almost be considered overpowered. His battle shot heals not only himself, but nearby allies for 1,000 health, or almost as much as a healing potion for Pip. On top of that, it grants him damage immunity for one second while he's shouting, which allows him to negate almost any damaging ultimate in the game, including, for a short time, Drogos' legendary Dragon Punch. By using his battle shout right when Drogos is about to hit him, he can completely prevent Drogos from dealing damage while Khan is damage immune. Once the immunity is over, however, the punch can still go through. Still, it counters the Dragon's Fury to some extent, so it's a pretty powerful ability. With Firing Line active, 4 seconds of crowd control immunity and 20% increased damage are thrown on top of his Battle Shouts buffs, which is the main reason Khan makes his way onto this list. Not only is Khan extremely difficult to kill with all these buffs on his Battle Shout and a versatile, bulky shield, but he's got some pretty nice crowd control as well. His movement ability charges him into an enemy, stuns them, and throws them backwards, which not only keeps him from doing very much for a few seconds, but also has the slight potential to hurl the enemy off a cliff if both people are positioned right. Khan's ultimate is one of the most powerful crowd control abilities in the game, too. With a press of a button, Khan can pick up the enemy he's looking at and hold them up in the air, stunned, for a whole five seconds. This is an insane amount of time for your team to focus fire the poor victim of the overpowered overpower ability, and is basically an instant death for the enemy in Khan's clutches. If Khan chooses, he can walk around with the enemy he's holding, so he can stroll over to an edge and blast them off into the sunset, which will most likely result in the enemy dying if they're not hypermobile like Eevee or Androxus. Khan's weapon also deals some pretty nice damage at a solid 200 damage every quarter of a second which can put some really nice sustained damage on an enemy that can scare them away from the objective, so Khan can sit pretty on the objective or payload and dominate. While his run rate isn't really all that great compared to some of the other tanks on this list, Khan can still be really powerful and is a strong new tank that deserves number 5 on this list. Number 4, Fernando. Fernando has always been one of the stronger tanks in the realm. With a pretty big health pool of 4,600 health that can be boosted up to an incredible 5,350 health with the Cavalier card at max level and his extremely versatile and massive shield, bearing a whopping 8,000 health, Fernando can be extremely difficult to kill. His shield can be up for a full 10 seconds, which is the largest uptime of any shield in the game aside from Khan's. This time can be made infinite with the Aegis talent, so Fernando has the potential to have a massive wall of health sitting up for his teammates to shoot behind for an extremely long time. He can also move his shield around to block damage from any direction, so if he's got an incoming salvo from one direction and a seedling from the other, he can turn his shield to effectively block both. His shield is also big and strong enough to block entire ultimates, including, but not limited to, all three of Victor's barrage shots which can be blocked simply by walking backwards, and Terminus' ultimate which can be blocked by standing right in front of it. Fernando's shield is by far the most powerful shield in the game that is not a wall or indestructible power siphon of doom. Fernando's weapon is also the most effective weapon in the game for reapplying cauterize. It requires almost no aim to use, so all you have to do is be near your target and you can burn them down with fire. His damage over time fire effect on his flame lands makes it so that cauterize is continually applied while the enemy is on fire, 
And since he has a resource bar that his weapon draws power from, instead of a set ammo mount that forces him to reload like other champions, he can potentially never have to reload. It is a pretty useful weapon that can be quite annoying to go against on the objective. Fernando also has some of the highest self-sustain in the game. His formidable talent, when equipped, provides him with his own personal Ceres that gets activated whenever he drops below 40% health and is not on cooldown, which can bring him back from the brink of death by healing him for 200 health a tick or 1000 health a second for 3 seconds. I personally use this one a lot, and it makes Fernando a lot harder to kill compared to other tanks. Oftentimes when Fernando puts his shield up, it's because his health is starting to run low, so one specific card in his loadout can help him fuel right back up for the fight while he's blocking gobs of damage from the front. Last Stand, when at his highest level, can heal him up 500 health a second, or 100 a tick until he's back up to 40% health. So in a fight when Fernando drops to critically low levels, he can put up his 8000 health shield, recharge his health, and destroy all his remaining enemies. He also has the ability to counter any damaging ultimate in the game with his ultimate that makes him completely immortal for 4 seconds. This can easily counter one of the most powerful ultimates in the game, Drogo's Dragon Punch, as well as a slew of other ultimates and scenarios in which our self-appointed knight would be likely to die. Fernando is an incredibly powerful tank that earns number 4 on this list. Number 3. Terminus. Terminus has an incredibly high win rate compared to all the other tanks, which is consistently about 2 or 3% higher than the next best tanks. Setting out a fairly average 4000 health pool, which can be buffed to 4750 just like Khan's health, he has several ways he can make his effective health much higher. With a Strength of Stone card in his loadout, he can gain up to 20% damage reduction if he has all of his Calamity charges stored at the card's max level, which makes him a much harder target to kill. On top of that, he can gain 40% damage reduction for a whole 3 seconds after he uses his Shatterfall movement ability when Unfeeling is at level 5. When stacked with his Undying Talent that gives him 20% damage reduction below 40% health, he can potentially have 80% damage reduction at a time when he has all his charges stored, he's recently used Shatterfall, and he's at low health. This crazy amount of damage reduction makes the Fallen extremely difficult to make fall again. His Power Siphon is the most powerful damage blocking ability of all the tank shields, since it is the only ability that cannot be destroyed. His Power Siphon blocks out all the damage that hits a pretty large radius in front of him, which makes him an extremely powerful tank as far as shielding goes. Using this ability can also heal him back up for as much as 25% of the damage absorbed with a playing god card, which can make Terminus that much more annoying to kill. This ability also charges up Calamity Charges, so he can spray out a ton of damage that was just shot at him in a similar fashion to Andro's Reversal. Speaking of damage, Terminus is any squishy champion's worst nightmare if he gets close enough. His massive Massacre Axe deals 650 damage a hit and is extremely difficult to miss with, so if he's close to an enemy, they're going to take damage. His slower stun from his Shatterfall, depending on the talent he's using, also makes it extremely easy for Terminus to deal damage to an enemy, and if he's got Nimble like most Terminus's pick up, they're not getting away anytime soon without using a movement ability. His ultimate is also pretty powerful because of its ability to scare enemies away from the objective. When he dies, he can completely resurrect himself where he fell, and once he's back up to full health, he releases a huge surge of energy that deals 4000 damage to nearby enemies. This is enough to one-shot even some tanks, which makes his ultimate extremely effective at clearing enemies away from the objective. The only downside to his ult is that it can be pretty easily countered by a well-placed shield or damage blocking ability like Andro's Reversal. Terminus' ability to wreck anything that comes near and devastate the objective earns him third place on this list. Number 2. Inara. Inara is one of the hardest tanks to kill because she combines some of the insane damage reduction from Terminus and the crazy healing of others like Barrick and Fernando. She's got one of the largest health pools in the game at 4700 health, which can shoot all the way up to 5450 with Steadfast in her loadout, and her effective HP only goes higher with the damage reduction she can have. If she's rocking Sacred Ground in her loadout at max level, she can have up to 25% damage reduction when she stands in her Warder's Field, and this can stack with the 30% damage reduction from Earthen Guard to bring her up to 55% damage reduction. If she's also using the Mother's Grace talent, she gains an additional 20% damage reduction on her Earthen Guard that can bring her to a grand total of a maximum 75% damage reduction all at once. This makes her extremely difficult to kill, but what makes her even more annoying is her crazy potential for healing. When using her Earthen Guard, she receives 30% increased healing in the ability's 5 second uptime, so her healers are much more potent when they heal her. On top of that, there are two very powerful cards in her loadout that give her some great sustainability on the battlefield. Caretaker heals her for 100 health per second while she's in her Warder's Field at max level, and Stone Bulwark heals her while she's in her Earthen Guard for 125 health per second at max level. 
If she spreads out her use of these abilities, she can heal for about 110 health per second on average for a whole 11 seconds at a time. Or she can use both abilities at once to heal for a whole 225 health a second for 5 seconds, which is more powerful than an Astral Mark from Genos and can just casually be built into her loadout. And Nara struggles the least without a healer compared to other tanks in the game, which makes her a force to be reckoned with on the objective. Her wall is also one of the most powerful shielding abilities in the game, for the simple fact that it's not actually a shield. Inara can raise a wall up out of the ground which can completely change the flow of battle and buy her team better vantage points in crucial seconds to capture the objective or push the payload. She can wall off popular routes for enemy tanks to reach the objective, forcing them to find less favorable routes to push from that your teammates have an easier time spraying damage down. The wall can also be used directly on point to isolate a lone tank on your side of the map, so suddenly what used to be a 5 from V5 for their tank turns into a 5v1 in Inara's favor. Not only that, but her warder's field can be used to straight up deny a tank from getting on the objective. All objectives on the siege maps in the game, with the exception of Ascension's Peak, have a circular objective the same size as her warder's field with a treacherous ground talent that boosts the ability's radius, so she can slow any tank that tries to step on the objective while also dealing some nice tick damage while they're in it. The cripple from her treacherous ground town also cripples the enemy caught in it, so it's extremely effective at trapping a pesky flank or squishy champion that challenges Inara. Her ult can also buy her team a few seconds on the objective and can turn the tide of battle in her favor, although it can be countered pretty easily by Khan's battle shot and firing line combo, or Grok's healing totem with Totemic Ward equipped. Overall, Inara is one of the scariest tanks to fight in the entire game that deserves number 2 on this list. Number 1. Makoa. You challenge Makoa? No? That's what I thought. Makoa makes his way onto the number one spot on this list because he can be absolutely devastating on the objective and has a strong killing potential, especially in higher level matches. His iconic hook can automatically turn a fight into a 5v4 if his teammates are smart and shoot at the powerless victim in his clutches, and the higher up your elo goes, the more likely this is to happen. His cannon is also pretty powerful and also easy to aim with, dealing 650 damage to enemies near him with a bit of drop off the farther away you go. Fighting Makoa as a squishy champion can be a huge problem, as even if you run away, he can still hook you right back to him if you don't go far enough away, and he can also chase you with his shell spin pretty easily. With his Pluck Legendary, he can also take away almost half the health of any squishy he hooks into their doom, which does not bode well for his poor victim. As far as health goes, he stacks up with the rest pretty nicely, and with Leviathan, he is the tankiest frontline in the game. He bears a solid 4,500 health pool, which is the only one on this list that cannot actually be boosted higher with loadout cards. However, with Leviathan, his health pool can shoot straight up to 5,700 health, which is the highest health pool in the game that can put less tanky champions like Barrack to shame. His gigantic dome shield is also really nice, bearing 6,000 health and lasting for 4 seconds, which can be boosted to 7,250 health and 6.5 and seconds using Carapace and Ancient Resolve cards respectively. Since it's a dome, it is one of two shields that cannot actually be shot over like Fernando or Khan's shield, which can easily be made ineffective by lobbing a seedling or something over the top of it. The only other shield that can do that is the one that spawns with Barrack's ultimate, and since it's an ultimate ability, it's not going to be up nearly as often as Makoa's shell shield. Since his shield covers about the same radius as the objective on siege maps, he can deny any incoming damage onto the objective, which is an extremely powerful ability. While in his shell shield, he can also heal up a pretty decent amount. With Tidal Grace set to 5, he can heal up for 250 health per second while his shield is active, which is slightly more than an Astral Mark from Genos, and also more than the healing put out by both of Inara's healing cards combined. On top of that, he can max out his Springtide card and heal for 1,250 health every time he hits an enemy with his Shell Spin, which is a heal more powerful than Pip's Healing Potion casually put into his loadout. If he hits two enemies lined up in a row, he can heal up half his health in an instant, which is an insanely powerful ability for a tank to have. While it's not that effective in practice, it is still a really nice heal to have. Makoa's ultimate is also one of the most powerful in the game. He switches to a melee attack with his Dredge Anchor that deals as much damage as the Terminus' Massacre Axe. He gains 5,000 health, and he just looks downright scary. The 5,000 health boost can put him up to 9,500 health normally, and with Leviathan active, he has an unbelievable 10,700 health. On top of that, with Leviathan, he is CC immune during the whole 8 seconds Ancient Rage is active, so Grumpy Bombs, Kinetic Bursts, Overpowers, Warders Fields, and all other abilities that would be able to make his ult less effective are completely useless here. The only way to counter Makoa's ultimate is to pin him down in a 4 or 5 versus 1 situation or have Drogos beat the crap out of him with his Dragon Punch. If Makoa doesn't have Leviathan, Zen can counter his ult with Guillotine, but with the amount of Makoa's I've seen using Leviathan lately, this situation is pretty rare. Makoa is an extremely, extremely powerful frontline that deserves the title of the best tank in Paladins. 
So, I hope you guys have enjoyed my list of the top 5 most powerful tanks and paladins. Do you guys agree with my list? Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Also, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this from me. If you want to join my Discord server to pick up tips, leave suggestions, or play with me and other cool people, a link to that will be in the description. Anyways, that's the end of this video. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.